Um, right, so... Okay, I think we're probably doing best with Diana. And then probably Zanning. Um, oh, we can talk to Finn now. And Niera. So, but I, I think these are probably going to be our four choices. Okay, so who should we talk to? Who would you guys like me to talk to? So we can talk to Diana, to Zanning, to Finn, or to Liera. The gutter is the best place to be, let's be honest with you. Okay, Finn it is. We missed a bit there. Uh, okay. Here we go. Right. Today is first. Today is my first day officially on the job. I can't afford to lose face in front of the princesses. Maid, don't ask us. We don't know either. Head housekeeper. There we go. Caught up. You should ask the princesses. They're all literate. But what's wrong? I guess you're unwilling to make trouble for the, their highnesses, aren't you? I'm hearing voices up ahead. They're coming from inside of a garden. Upon noticing me, a group of maids scatter, laughing as they go. Only Finn stands there helplessly. Ah! Arel, Your Excellency. Forgive me if their laughter disturbed your morning. I'm afraid I'm not very good at controlling my staff. I have neglected my duty. I shall beat myself repeatedly. I notice that Finn is clutching a piece of paper in her hand. Could this be what I overheard them talking about? What do you have there, Finn? Instead of replying, she shakes her head and tries to hide the paper behind her back. I don't mean to upset her further, so rather than force the issue, I just nod and turn to go. But she grabs my shirt to stop me. Her voice sounds hesitant as she speaks. Um, Aurel, Your Excellency, you must know how to write, don't you? I can't help but smile at the girl. She appears to be both nervous and earnest. Of course I do. Please don't laugh at me. I need to write a letter to my hometown, but there are too many words that I don't know how to spell. Could Aurel, Your Excellency, please write it for me? This is a letter to your family? Yes. My father is a very strict person. I have to write regularly or he'll be angry at me. Strict because he loves her and worries about her, no doubt. Asking me for help is a breach of etiquette. Finn must have struggled with her on her own for some time before she was willing to risk angering someone above her station. I refuse. What? Finn looks devastated by my flat denial of her request, so I repeat my words again. I refuse to write for you. You need to write this letter for yourself or the words won't come from your heart. I would be happy to assist you. <laughs> the pains of the times before spell check, yes. I find us a table in the shade and call Finn to sit down. I don't know how you've managed in the past, but asking people to write letters for you is clearly causing you trouble. Start writing, and when you come to a word you don't know how to spell, I'll teach you. I came here to be a teacher. No one said I could only teach fencing. Well, that... Aurel, Your Excellency, I don't want to cause you much trouble. At first, Finn doesn't want to move, and her face turns red. There's a whistling noise coming from her ears. But I continue to insist. It takes some convincing on my part, but finally she sits down beside me. Uh, welcome back. The garden is full of magic. 
Even the sunlight and temperature are carefully controlled by magic. The perfect surroundings sometimes make it hard to stay awake after you sit down. Finn asks a lot of questions at first, but as time goes on she starts to get drowsy. Finally, after a long period of silence, I look over and discover she has fallen asleep. Maybe because of the tiredness she looks so peaceful sleeping beside me. I don't have the heart to wake her. Ah, there you are, Finn. Erephus, your highness? Ah, this one. This is a rare sight. I never thought I'd see Finn sleeping so comfortably with a man nearby. The little squirrel on Erephus's shoulder bounces onto Finn's and then circles around her. Finn used to be afraid of men. What kind of spell did you work to make her trust you, Aurel, Your Excellency? And can you teach me? I smile at her compliment. I merely promise to instruct her on new words for a letter she's writing. I fear I am not a very good teacher, though. A lesson about writing? That's rarer than Finn being comfortable about a man. She has a very bad memory. We tried to give her lessons on writing, but we soon found she forgets most of what she learns. After some time, she became uninterested in writing and didn't want to trouble the others any more. Erephus seems to have noticed the paper in Finn's hand. She pauses for a moment. Ah, a letter. That makes sense. She trusts you a lot, Sorel, Your Excellency. It looks like I wasn't needed after all. What do you mean, Erephus, Your Highness? This morning, I remembered that Finn periodically asked people to write letters for her. I came to see if she was asking for help today. As she talks, the squirrel jumps onto Finn's hand and tries to drag the letter away. No matter how hard it tries, it can't free the letter from the sleeping girl's grip. Erephus just watches the little animal without stopping it. Finally, she seems to come back from wherever her mind had wandered. With a snap of her fingers, the squirrel stops tugging at the letter and looks to its master, awaiting orders. I have some advice for you, Aurel, Your Excellency. You obviously don't get it yet. The first rule of the oblivious garden is nobody talks about the oblivious... No is that nobody leaves of their own free will. The second, of course, is that nobody gets in of their own free will either. Do you understand, Aurel, Your Excellency? No one in the garden has any contact with the outside world in any case. Erephus reaches down and strokes the paper with her fingers. I know you don't get it yet, but helping Finn may do more than harm than good in the long run. I hope you have the strength to stop helping her before she gets hurt, Aurel, Your Excellency. Come on, Chestnut, we're going back to the library. Um. Anyone who didn't pick on that, basically, any letter she writes to her father will never be delivered to her father. The squirrel's eyes watch me as it returns to Erephus's shoulder, almost like it wants to fill in whatever Erephus wasn't saying. Though it's a fine day today, one might catch a cold sleeping outside. Isn't that right, Finn? On that inexplicable note, Erephus walks away, taking her pet with her. Yes, it is. It's very sad. Just then, a cold wind blows through. She is right. Finn shouldn't be sleeping out here if the temperature is dropping. Finn, are you awake? There's no response. 
I can't leave her like this or she will catch a cold. Getting up, I take off my coat. I cover her tiny frame against the sudden chill wind. My heart skips a beat when my hand brushes against her short silver hair. She drools like a child while she sleeps well. Maybe because her sleeping face looks so adorable, or maybe because the wind is blowing so heavily, that I start to worry about her. I close her opening mouth with my hand like a marionette, and then lower my head. No. At first I think she's talking in her sleep. No, get away from me. Her eyes suddenly open, but instead of showing their usual sheen, they seem dull with fear, like she's come face to face with some unseen monster out of her nightmares. She jumps up to flee as if she thinks she's being chased. In a panic, she trips on her skirt and falls onto me. While it's true that she is small, I wasn't expecting to have her ca to catch her. We both crash to the ground. Why? Why? Keep away from me! Her face is flushed, her eyes are filled with tears, and she keeps struggling. At this point, she is hopelessly tangled in her skirt. Finn, calm down, it's all right! Trying to get through to her is useless, all I can do is hold her tight to keep her from hurting herself, in panic. Her skin is hot and I feel her pulse pounding beneath her arms I'm holding onto. Rather than soothe her, my touch only seems to terrify her more. She grows more and more frantic and some of her hair becomes tangled in my jacket. Some small strands of her hair are pulled off by her frantic behaviour and then fall like raindrops. Sorry, Her Real, Your Excellency. The unexpected pain of having her hair torn out snaps her back to reality. Her eyes are filled with tears and her clothes are a mess. But what I'm coming to recognise is standard behaviour for this Hundle maid. The first thing she does is apologise to me. Please don't be angry with me. I, I'm afraid of having Ben touch me, so... No, I didn't mean to fall asleep, but I unconsciously... Please excuse me, Aurel, Your Excellency. I am just a maid, and I don't have too much interest in learning words. It's all my fault. I am not a good student, but Aurel, Your Excellency, is a wonderful teacher. Please trust me. Her panic is different now. She may not be lashing out, but she is stammering out an apology that is quickly breaking down into tears. I take a deep breath to steady myself. Don't worry about it, Finn. I mean to teach you anyway. We will find something you're interested in and I will teach it to you. Whatever it is you want to learn, I promise. I believe you can do it. Still sniffling, she smiles at my words and then hurries away. Finn. What a strange girl. She looks like a neighbourhood girl who is so common compared to the other's princesses, but it seems there are many hidden secrets to her. The face she shows to the world is a mask. I wonder what the real Finn is like. I remember her waving frantic frantically for help the first time we met. Aurel, Your Excellency, can you help me? Perhaps there are more things she needs to help with from the others. I do want to be there to help her. But first, I need rest. Teaching is <laughs> exhausting.